I feel like with social media, you're in charge of what you see. So depending on the post that you interact with, it can be either good or bad. So if you interact with a lot of models and celebrities and they make you feel bad about your appearance, um, then obviously it would create a negative space for you to be in. But if you interact with more positive stuff, you interact with say activist accounts and stuff like that, Islamic reminders and stuff like that, then it becomes a positive space for you to be in and you don't really get much negativity from it. Hi everyone, so good afternoon. Um, this is Ray speaking on behalf of Duba Team and Youth Center Malaysia and we'll be discussing today about social media, uh, the effects of social media on, young, on youth basically. We do have our two speakers for today. Okay, so let's start first like um, with introducing both of you guys. Uh, it's, way, it's way better if you guys will speak on your behalf. Uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon all. Um, as they mentioned, it, my name is Dr. Khadija Hassanah Abang Abdullah. All right, Salam Alaikum. My name is Wardina Safia. So today I'll be discussing about the impact of social media. On, in terms of mental aspect uh, with regards to youth and to our other youngsters because nowadays a lot of people are actually um, having difficulties adapting to the new environment that we're currently living in with the, with the new age of information. So I'll be speaking first with Dr. Khadija with regards to some of the questions um, in uh, regards to this matter. So let's start with the first question. So what do you think on, um, is the impact of social media on, on a mental aspect of an individual, especially during this um, pandemic, this COVID season, or post-COVID for other countries. So we're currently bubbled up in our, uh, holed up in our rooms for like a long time. Okay. Let's start with a bit about social media. It's a very, it's very popular nowadays. And I think even some of our grandparents use it. Yeah? And um, data says yeah, in Malaysia, about 80% of Malaysian are active social media users. And on average, they spend about five hours per day uh, on social media. Okay, and the um, most popular um, social media is WhatsApp, Facebook, eh? um, and others like YouTube, Instagram, Telegram, TikTok. Eh? The question is, why is it um, popular? Yeah, and if this if this is good eh? um, um, to the individual, eh? especially during this COVID uh, epidemic time. The short answer is both. Yeah? It has good effects and also the bad effects. Yeah? So let's look at the positive side first. Yeah? First, it's a place to get information. So especially during this uh, COVID epidemic, yeah? uh, people need information. In Malaysia, the officials use it to spread information and news. And if you use it well, it can calm your anxiety. So it can give a good effect yeah? because you get um, good information or um, the, the true information. And then uh, you can use it to still stay connected with your friends and families. Yeah? During this, uh, in Malaysia, it's called movement control order. So you cannot go out of the house yeah? uh, without any reasons. Yeah? So when you are sitting at home, uh, staying at home, and it's good yeah, if you use social media to still get in touch, uh, still get connected with uh, your family members and friends, yeah, so that you don't feel lonely. So it's again a positive effect. Yeah? And also, it, it can be a coping strategy when you feel um, lonely yeah, or bored yeah, inside the house, then you can use the social media to get new or funny, engaging content that make you feel relaxed or even feel pleasure. In Malaysia, yeah, um, I noticed that people um, use social media to find new hobbies. Yeah? Uh, some people start gardening, yeah? uh, try new recipes. Yeah? Uh, so they, they use the social media to, uh, to try new things, yeah? which is again a good thing, a positive thing yeah, for them. And uh, for some people uh, during this uh, uh, epidemic, yeah, they cannot as usual. So, um, and especially those who are doing business, so it can be difficult for them. 
So when they use social media to help um, market their services or products, yeah, uh, they can still continue to do business. People uh, organize, yeah, still organize webinars or live streaming through Facebook so that they can still be in touch with their community. And for youth, yeah, they, they still have their classes yeah, or um, uh, engagement with their peers through online meetings. So that's the positive part. Yeah? But then, of course, there are the negative side. Yeah? For example, misinformation. Yeah? This happens when you get information about uh, the COVID-19 epidemic from friends, families, and not from trusted source or verified sources. And this actually can lead to unnecessary anxiety, um, panic, yeah? uh, and worries. Yeah? So people can become very panicked and they start, for example, that time, yeah, they start buying a lot of face masks, yeah? um, hand sanitizers, yeah? uh, and uh, they, they stock it all up. This can create um, deplete in the um, resources yeah? uh, and can lead to other problems as well. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are those people, those individuals who like to create fake news. These people, they, they create fake news about the virus yeah? um, and how to, to deal with the viruses and this creates anxiety and also panic. Uh, to the people, yeah, and um, during this um, movement control order, when you cannot get go out, yeah, so you spend most of your time in the house, and sometimes you get bored, yeah, so you are mostly on social media. So, reading the feeds on social media usually, yeah, people show um, good things, yeah, uh, happy things, and. Um, this can give pressure to others. Yeah? For example, uh, when your circumstances are different from others, uh, you may try to compare yourself. Yeah? For example, you see on Facebook, your friend uploaded a, a picture of they're having fun, they're having uh, a good time yeah, in their house. Yeah? But then when you compare to your situation at home, yeah, you may come from a different uh, family background, uh, having lots of family issues at home. So now your parents are both at home, for example. Yeah? Uh, they're fighting yeah? uh, and you're unhappy at home. And sometimes uh, uh, you can have like financial issues and that can uh, cause a lot of burden and a problem as well at home. Yeah? So uh, when you... Um, compare yourself to others who are uh, portraying this uh, perfect picture, this happy picture, uh, you can feel very, uh, sometimes can feel very depressed and you can develop other depressive symptoms like um, sleep problem, yeah? uh, appetite problem, uh, losing your interest, yeah? feeling worthless, uh, unhappy yeah? and also it can lead to uh, things like uh, thinking about death yeah? uh, and suicide. So uh, the worst part is uh, it leads to you feeling that life is not worth living anymore. And sometimes yeah, uh, on social media, you may give opinions, yeah, your own opinions. So you write there on Facebook yeah, your opinions and people may not, yeah, may not agree with what you say and can even shame you or degrade you, humiliate you and this may be considered as cyberbullying. These are, I think, yeah, um, what I've given here is uh, a look at both the positive effects and also the negative effects of uh, using social media and especially during this uh, COVID epidemic period. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Ardina. So, do you think um, the youth today use social media wisely? Okay, so you know what I will do? I will call my youth here because I don't think it's fair <laughs> for me to speak on behalf of the youth, because I'm not youth, I'm old, mm -hmm. right? So I'm gonna mm -hmm. call my youth here. This is my daughter, yes. Amna, she's 17. Come here, darling. Uh, I, I, this is Amna, okay. Hello. So, Good Amna, <laughs> let's ask her the question, because uh, in terms of, uh, uh, like what Dr. Khadija said, I actually, um, my, my research for my honours thesis was about um, online racism so that is also a mixture of cyberbullying inside there which i studied in depth with um i'm very fascinated with um online uh, the online behavior and how the online environments can change um a person um and um so i found that very intriguing because of my own experiences online as well 
So uh, studies show that when you ask them a question, so there was a study that uh, when they asked teenagers, so is social media good or bad? So they have a very mixed answer for that. So some of them say yes, some of them say no. Even research, research shows that there's no, uh, there's, there's no substantiated um, uh, research that shows it is definitely good or it is definitely bad. So there's a lot of mixed research in that. So you can't say social media is good or bad. So you, you're not able to do that. So whether teenagers or youngsters use social media wisely would depend on a lot of factors, right? So now maybe if I ask a very general question like that to her, I mean, what will you answer to? Um, I feel like with social media, you're in charge of what you see. So depending on the post that you interact with, it can be either good or bad. So if you interact with a lot of models and celebrities and they make you feel bad about your appearance, um, then obviously it would create a negative space for you to be in. But if you interact with more positive stuff, you interact with, say, activist accounts and stuff like that, Islamic reminders and stuff like that, then it becomes a positive space for you to be in and you don't really get much negativity from it. For me and my friends, we just use it to stay updated with each other's lives or post things that we think people should be aware of, like keeping up with movements from around the world, like the Black Lives Matter movement or issues in China and that stuff. That's what we use it for. But obviously there are negatives. For example, um, those anonymous sites where you can say what you think about people anonymously, that gives a lot of platform for cyberbullying when you're hiding behind the screen. But other than that, I haven't really had any negative experiences and any of my friends. So, so I, I see some, some, some teenagers using it for lots of good, you know. But I also see uh, through research and experience um, a lot of young people using it for horrible things you know mm -hmm. um, bad bad things so that's that's very that's a mixture uh, on on that if you were to ask me mm. it can lead to symptoms of anxiety and also symptoms of depression youth they like to be on tiktok yeah Amna must know it. Eh? TikTok. Uh, TikTok users like to do challenges, uh, and there is a constant pressure to keep up with their peers. Yeah, uh, there is a term called FOMO, fear of missing out. So they need to uh, be like their peers. Uh, so they do different challenges, different dances, for example. Yeah, uh, just Dr. to Dr. be. Dr. Khadija, I just had yes. this conversation with my daughter last night about TikTok, mm. and then she was yes. schooling me. She was like, Umi, she says, TikTok is not all bad. She said, because she was she was talking about the good... Do you, you want to share? Mm -hmm.